Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another specific look at a single vehicle in particular from Gran Turismo Sport and this is one which we've discussed before the Subaru the Subaru Vision GT the Visiv as it's called in the game and of course we have discussed this in Gran Turismo 6 this alongside the Mitsubishi are among my least favorite Vision GT offerings I'd probably put the Beamer in there as well although I think the Beamer is probably my favorite of those three even though I don't like any of them that much and the reason why I don't like it that much is because in particular when it comes to this one and to some degree with the Mitsubishi as well it doesn't seem to have much relevance to what everyone loves the most about Subaru because at the end of the day the Vision GT program it's all about the game it's all about the players it's all about having that imagination and of course this is something that I've talked about before doubtless we will again and some of the manufacturers fully embrace that Chaparral, Dodge, Nike you could say even before the Vision GT program was even a thing Others too, some of the crazy ones that we probably won't even see. I don't recall what that cancelled one was that looked kind of like the Batman tumbler, um, but whatever that one was, it wasn't Batoni, it was some other design house, I think. Maybe Zagato? No. No, it wasn't Zagato, but I don't recall now, but you know the one I mean. I love it when they do that. They fully embrace the spirit of the program. It's not just a marketing ploy. For me, Mitsubishi and BMW, and to some degree, a lesser degree though, this one as well, they are more guilty of that. It's just a marketing ploy, <laughs> really just showcasing what Subarus are moving into technology-wise and where their design philosophy is going to go, which as I said is understandable, but come on have a bit more fun than that it's a game after all so this vehicle has a lot to offer but simultaneously in a funny kind of way it's very similar to the nissan nismo lm car the front wheel drive prototype because not only does it handle in a very similar way to that car but in a similar way again it has specs which it doesn't really deliver on in fact, the power is pretty close to what the Nissan has. This has 630 horsepower, it's a hybrid, 362 pound-feet of torque, and although it is technically an all-wheel drive hybrid, it feels much more like a pure front-wheel drive car. And you'd be surprised, actually, if you compare them back-to-back, -back, just how similar this feels to the Nissan Nismo. They are very, very similar. And part of that comes from the fact that, of course, there aren't that many front-wheel drive cars in Gran Turismo with over 600 horsepower. So they're a relatively exclusive club. There are plenty with around 3 to 500 horsepower, but not many go into supercar territory, whereas this one and the Nissan both do. However, there are, of course, certain things that you can do with this that you cannot do with the Nissan, such as take it off-road, <laughs> which, for one thing, would be pretty cool to do in a Lamar prototype, but for obvious reasons, you can't. With that being said, that's kind of the issue that I have with it. It's a Subaru, and when anyone who's got any interest in cars thinks of Subaru, you don't think of front-wheel drive shooting brakes with hybrid motors. You think of rally cars, you think of the Forester STI, you think of maybe some of their more weird creations, but which still, more often than not, have some kind of tangential relation to rallying and to that lineage. This simply doesn't. It has very little to do with the car that is most people's favorite Subaru, the Impreza. It doesn't feel anything like that, modern Impreza or otherwise. Imagine if instead of this, for instance, Subaru had done what Audi did with that modern interpretation of the Quattro that they made as a concept car, the white one, years back. Imagine if Subaru had done that for the Vision GT program, but they'd done it as a modern interpretation of the 22B Impreza. Imagine how many fans would absolutely lose their minds, even if it had like 350, 400 horsepower, lowered weight, all-wheel drive, and just felt like this ball of rally fury. I think that would have been an awesome little example of what they could do. Again, in a similar way to what Mitsubishi did with the Tarmac concept, which of course is not featured in this game, but was up until Gran Turismo 6. It's a tiny little hatchback based on the Colt, but it's kind of like what you'd get if you took the Colt and then injected it with the DNA of an Evo. It's a perfect combination and a really badass little hot hatch. They could have done that here as well. They could have made that modern interpretation, but unfortunately, it feels to me at least like it's just kind of a marketing opportunity, wasted chance, all that kind of usual cliche. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of people who love this car, but I don't hear many people who do. 
I hear plenty of people who think it's a nice car, it's cool, they like driving it, but not many people love it. Whereas if you ask how many people who like Subaru love the 22B, plenty of people do. And to me, that's kind of all the explanation you need as to what this car could have been versus what it ended up being. Now, as I said, you've got a lot of power. 630 horsepower is plenty to be working with. That actually makes it in the higher end of the Vision GTs in terms of power. It is one of the more powerful examples. For instance, that's about 100 horsepower more than the Infiniti. It's, I believe, more than the Nissan as well. I think that has like 616 horsepower or something like that. I may be wrong though. It may be closer to 700 actually, I can't recall. But either way, this is one of the most powerful Vision GT cars out there. Now in terms of how it handles, that's where it hasn't really changed. It still feels like a really, really overpowered front wheel drive car. And that's just not conducive to rallying. It just doesn't work. You can see me wrestling it through the corners here. In fact, through some of the corners, I'm just full on pulling the handbrake because that's often how you can drift with a front wheel drive car. You lock up the rear wheels, keep the power on the front, and it's kind of like what you see chavs doing, putting uh, dinner trays under the rear wheels of their hatchbacks and sliding around McDonald's car parks. You can actually do that, and it works with many vehicles. The front wheel drive ones, of course. In this case, even that doesn't help that much. It still feels very heavy, very cumbersome through corners. Despite the fact that it doesn't have a massive amount of torque, it feels like it does. The torque steer is very, very bad. And the single most off-putting thing about this car is definitely how fierce that torque steer is because it's constantly working against you as soon as you put any throttle down. It doesn't matter if you give it 20% or 100, to some degree the car is just trying to pull into a straight line all the time. And although that sounds like a good thing, because of course, I've mentioned before how front wheel drive cars can kind of save themselves. If you make a slight mistake, for instance, maybe the rear wheel goes on the grass, the front wheels can pull it back in line. It's one of the best things about a front wheel drive car, in fact. With this one, it feels like it's doing that, but to the nth degree, way, way too much. It's constantly fighting against you, almost like it just wants to be a dragster and just go in a straight line. It feels weird, very weird. On the road, it definitely feels better. So if you do decide to buy this one, and it is a million credits if you decide to buy it, I would recommend keeping it on the street. And again, if you have to say that about Subaru, that's not exactly a good thing in my book. I mean, it kind of goes against, as I said, everything they're known for and everything they're arguably best at. So that's it for my thoughts overall. As I said, it is a million. So if you want to spend a million, then sure, but you don't get the cockpit view. The handling constantly works against you, in particular the torque steer off-road. It's not the fastest of things around circuits either unlike the Nissan, because of course with the Nissan Nismo, with similar handling characteristics, you can make it way more powerful, which allows it to still be very good in its own way. With this one, you don't even have that working for you. So ultimately, I would say that this is one of the most covertly niched Vision GTs, one of the most unexpectedly niched ones, because you'd think, oh, Subaru, plenty of people could enjoy that. Whereas in reality, it's the exact opposite. Only the most hardcore of Subaru fans could probably excuse this car's faults. Because although it's not riddled with faults, the faults that it does have are pretty big, pretty glaring as well, with the main one being that handling. But overall, that's it for my thoughts. Of course, stick around on the channel for more reviews, news, tunes for Gran Turismo, etc. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.